This winter could be an absolute snow fest. A lot of people, maybe even you, could be in for some big time snow. But the signs are there, the little hints are there. You just have to know where to look. And right now, those signs are pointing at one thing. A big time winter could be on the way. With wild temperature swings, massive winter storms, and the return of the polar vortex. But how bad is it really gonna be? Let's get into it. I'm your Storm Stormcat 5, and this is my 2025 winter forecast. Now looking ahead at winter, there is a lot to consider. A big picture, we've got El Nino and La Nina that will set the stage. They can drive the overall trends of the season. But on top of that, we've also got a ton of other factors that all have an impact on the week to week setup. I'm gonna use these things as a compass, not a calendar. They're not gonna give us exact storm dates or totals, but they do give us a glimpse into how this winter could play out. All right, let's take a look at the big picture first and how El Nino and La Nina are gonna affect this winter. Before we do that, what is El Nino and La Nina? Now, as much as I would love it, El Nino is not a giant wrestler. I am El Nino. So El Nino and La Nina, or ENSO, which stands for the El Nino Southern Oscillation, is a natural climate pattern where a blob of water in the Pacific Ocean is either way warmer than normal, which is an El Nino, or way colder than normal, which is a La Nina. And if it's about average, it's called the neutral phase. Now, it might be hard to believe, but that water of cooler than normal or warmer than normal water off the Pacific can actually have huge impacts on our winter here in the United States. Now, in a La Nina year, the polar jet stream tends to dive way far down into the US. And we'll also combine here with the subtropical jet. Right in that area, you'll have low pressure after low pressure that'll swing down here, pull up all of this Gulf moisture, drop a bunch of snow from the Ohio Valley up through the Northeast. On top of that, we'll have big time cold outbreaks as that polar jet dives into the US and brings all of that Canadian cold air to parts of the country. Now an El Nino year is completely opposite. The polar jet stream tends to stay farther north in Canada and brings down some more Alberta type clipper systems with warmer, drier air inhabiting much of the heart of the country. Also notice how the Pacific jet stream down here stays further south as well. Now we generally see less snow and warmer conditions during an El Nino year. Now what is this year gonna be? We got some breaking news here guys, because this just came in. We're talking October 9th here. The Climate Prediction Center has just issued a La Nina advisory, where La Nina conditions are gonna last from December through February of this winter, and then potentially transition to an ENSO neutral pattern by the end of the winter. So it looks like the first part of the winter, we're gonna be in a La Nina, and then we'll transition to ENSO neutral. Right now, look at this big plume of colder than normal water that's starting to form in the Pacific Ocean. So at the beginning part of the winter, we're gonna go into a La Nina right in there and watch what happens as we go into December, January, and February. Ocean temperatures get to be about normal. And that's why our chances for a La Nina towards the back half of winter significantly decrease. So what does this all mean? What kind of impacts is this gonna have on the winter? Because we're gonna be in a La Nina pattern to start the winter, that means more active storm tracks favor wetter, colder conditions from the Midwest through the Ohio Valley up into the Northeast. And potentially, if it's cold enough, more snow. But towards the back half of the winter, as we go into an ENSO neutral pattern, does that mean we're in for an average winter? Nope, because ENSO normally just pushes our season in a certain direction. Without that push, this means our weather is more susceptible to other things like the teleconnections or the jet streams. So those patterns are gonna be key to unlocking this winter's winter forecast. We don't get a good idea about those factors until we're weeks away from the winter, not months. But there are other signs, there are other things we can look at. One of the best ways to forecast a season is to look at past years with similar setups. Now, what's this year been like? Well, we've had a ton of tornadoes. We've had zero landfall hurricanes and we're likely to go into an ENSO neutral pattern by the heart of the winter. One of the last years that looked like this was 2013. Now although 2013 wasn't necessarily a huge tornado year, there were some huge ones including the 2013 Moore tornado and the 2013 El Reno tornado. And the Moore tornado was the last EF5 tornado that we've measured until today. The National Weather Service just upgraded the Enerlin tornado to the first 
EF5 tornado that we've seen since 2013. Now, on top of that, 2013 was also at a neutral ENSO pattern for the majority of the winter. And they had exactly zero landfalling hurricanes. Does that sound familiar? 2025, we've had zero landfalling hurricanes going into a neutral ENSO pattern and the first EF5 tornado in 12 years. 2013 is our analog. Now, what was 2013 like? Well, we saw above average snowfall for much of the country. And that year we saw the polar vortex move its way and camp in the United States, which brought record cold to much of the country. We saw several very impactful storms one after another. I mean, they wouldn't stop coming. At the beginning of January in 2014, we had a blizzard along the East Coast where close to two feet fell in some spots. And then just a few days later, we had another winter storm that dropped over a foot of snow from Michigan all the way down through Illinois. Two days later, and then in the middle of February, we had a big time nor'easter slam the East Coast. And that dropped widespread amounts of a foot plus across the Northeast. Woohoo! And even into late March here, we had winter storms hitting the Northeast that dropped over eight inches of snow in Washington, DC. Wow. And some of the storms brought record cold. A lot of you probably remember this picture taken off Lake Michigan. I mean, do we need to say more? Yes, we do. The 2013 winter began with this winter storm on October 5th. It was a blizzard and it dropped over two feet of snow in parts of South Dakota. Are you kidding me? The winter of 2013 was just different. And another thing we can look at this far out is the ocean temperatures, because these can have significant impacts on where the ridges and troughs set up. Now, here's the ocean temperatures today. Obviously, you got your La Nina that's forming big time. But also, look at this big plume of warm water here in the Pacific. And what that can do is that could actually cause ridges to set up right underneath of that. And then you'll have a trough that forms out west and then a ridge that sometimes will form over the US like that, which would mean the winter storms will all go north into Canada. But the west coast will get crushed big time. So if you're in the eastern United States, you want snow, you want this plume of warm water to sneak its way towards the west coast of Canada. That was exactly the way it was in 2013. We had this big plume of warmer than normal water that set off the west coast and that created this big time ridging pattern here out west with a trough for the eastern US, allowing all those winter storms to move through the heart of the country. And look at this, if you compare October of 2013 to October of 2025, they look eerily similar. There's 2013, there's 2025. One more time, 2013, 2025. I mean, yeah. Now I'm really starting to get excited. Now on top of past years, we can also look at maps for this year. Now temperature wise for the next three months, it looks like we're still gonna be above average. But look at this going into the heart of winter. We got equal chances across much of the country. Now, when I see this, the jet stream would normally go right through here. And the Climate Prediction Center is telling us here, we're in for a very active storm track with lows riding along that jet. So buckle up. Now, the European model also puts out a seasonal forecast. Guess what? It just came out as well. Perfect timing. And this is gonna show us the surface pressure for the next three months. But why is that important? Because in the blue, you tend to have lower pressure, AKA winter storms. And in the red, you tend to have higher pressure, AKA clear blue skies. And if you have a persistent area of high pressure right here, the jet stream tends to take a huge dip north and then dips down into the US like that. And that's when our strong low pressure systems can form right along that and bring big time cold and snow to a lot of the US. Now for much of the winter, the European model has this ridge of high pressure hanging out here in October, not so much in November, but December, January, and February. Now if you want snow, especially in the Eastern US, that's the signal you like to see. The European model also puts out a precipitation forecast. I love the Europeans, with lower precipitation in brown and higher precipitation amounts in green and blue. Although it looks like the beginning of the winter is gonna be drier than normal for a lot of the country, watch what happens as we go into the heart of winter here. Boom! A big time signal for wetter than normal conditions through the heart of the country. And that once again supports the theory that we'll have a more active jet stream that'll dip down into the US with low pressures riding along it. Yes! Now the big question you wanna know is how much snow are you gonna get? Well, I can't give you an exact number. I wish I could. I'd be much richer than I am now. What I can show you though, is another European beauty. This is their official ensemble mean winter forecast and it calls for big time snow out west up into the Midwest here as well. Kind of normal snow falling in the Ohio Valley. And then look at this, big time snow falling also in the Northeast. But the ensemble is predicting basically nothing here for our Florida and Georgia brother, which if you guys remember last year, got hammered by that nine inch winter storm all the way down in Pensacola, Florida. It was insane. So here's the bottom line, guys. We're likely gonna start the winter in a lot 
Nina and then transition to an Enso neutral pattern, which generally means more snow and more cold. And if this winter is anything like the winter of 2013, which is the closest analog, we're gonna get patterned windows where storms will line up and deliver repeated dumps of snow and big time cold. That is your snow fest. Now I'm gonna be going live throughout the whole winter on the big weather show to cover every threat. Drop your city in the comments below. I'll try to narrow it down for you. Whatever you do, make sure you smash that like button and smash that subscribe button. Keep in mind too, guys, this forecast is three months out. So there's still a lot of specifics that gotta be worked out, but it's fun to think about. This was Stormcats 2025 winter forecast. Find someone, tell them you love them, tell them you care about them, do something nice for someone today. That's all I got. This is Stormcat 5 and I'll see you on the next one. Winter is coming.